Okay, um, I would like to take a motion, entertain a motion to leave executive session. Jeff makes a motion, Adam makes a second, all in favor? Mm -hmm. Great um, executive session. Um, the next item on the agenda is vote to authorize town council into a settlement agreement with, of Sandra Conway et al. versus Planning and Zoning Commission of the Town of Tarion et al. Jeremy, you want to tell me what we're going to do? We're going to we're just recommend. Do we'll just do nothing. Yeah, nothing. we're going to do nothing and we're going to send it over to the Architecture Review Board to look at the plans. Okay? Next item on the agenda, amendment of site plan 39 L is in Larry, St. Luke's Church, um, 18846 Boston Post Road. Amendment to the site plan to add handicapped accessible parking spaces as well as elderly parking near the front of the church. Adam, anything? I'm going to uh, recuse myself from this one, guys. Uh -huh. I will be back. Just give me a holler. <laughs> you sure will. You need me. Okay. Um, I think in our packets we got a letter from Mr. Weidler Gleason. Um, Jeremy, want to tell us what we got? Sure. Uh, this is a m very minor change to St. Luke's Episcopal Church parking. They, uh, they have plenty of parking. Uh, what they're trying to do is make a little more elderly and handicapped accessible parking right near that uh, front door closest to the post road. So what you'll see with these sketches is uh, some changing of things around and some changes to the landscaping which is uh, in the front yard setback. Uh, while the Gleason's here to explain a little bit more about a privet hedge which will help hide the cars. There's an existing tree that uh, has been there and you've all probably driven by this and not even seen that front parking lot. You look at the beautiful church, the door, but you don't notice the parking. So really here it's an opportunity to make things a little more handicap friendly, a little easier for the elderly to get in and out of that front door of the building. And this is closest to the uh, corner of Rings End and Boston Post Road. Mr. Gleason, welcome, sir. Thank you. A um, couple of pictures. This is the parking lot we have. Uh, on, you see the cursor? Just, nope. just for. Oh, this is working. Yeah. You, you came into the 21st century and we're not turned on power. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, the said the same thing. I haven't looked at it. <laughs> uh, so How does that one come out? Uh, the, the problem is when you turn this one on, it yeah, turns this off. one off, unless <laughs> you use the actual physical button. So if you use the physical button on this television, no. just go with that. Mm. Don't touch. Buy right, <laughs> um, anyway. two different brand TVs. Yeah, I'll do it. I've seen them both working. Oh, I get it. Oh, there it is. Okay. Um, okay. So this is the front looking at from a picture of the, um, the parking lot we're looking at. There's three handicapped parking spaces next to the education building here. And you can see there is a, um, there's a parking uh, island here that's raised. All this is impervious uh, macadam and um, and Belgian block. Um, turning to the left from that, we go to picture number C2. And now we're looking at, uh, this is Rings End Road. You see a couple of trees here. There's a big stone wall. And that's the Macau development across the street and the Neroden Fire Department. And then the next picture, which are across from us, and this is a picture of uh, Rings End Road basically from the Vaccaro de development. And you can see we've got a big stone wall that provides a barrier and buffer of sorts. Um, the existing plan is, um, uh, I've got a portion of the survey which you guys all got, and um, what we have on this is, um, the Boston Post Road, there's a couple of trees uh, right, let's see if we get the right one, okay. Uh, the sanctuary is here, this is the area we're speaking of right in here. There's a 30 inch maple here, this was removed a while ago. Uh, there's another one, this one we have to take down um, in order to have the privet hedge we're proposing uh, survive. And um, 
This is the way the parking goes now. We have four elderly parking and three handicapped. And what we're proposing is on a sketch that we provided that is designed to get us uh, hopefully an administrative approval from all of you that um, Uh, so what we're do proposing is to change the four elderly parking to eight with angled parking. And that means that instead of having the parking lot go along this line here, it's going to expand to 35 feet from the front yard. And then we're taking away that island in front of the education building, which is here, and we're going to have five handicapped, uh, I'm sorry, one, two, three, four, uh, four handicaps still uh, instead of three and another parking lot. So we go from seven to 13 parking spaces. These are the most desirable spaces. They are elderly and handicapped parking. They're at the same level as the education building and get you right into the sanctuary uh, so you can attend services. We are, yes, Jeff. What's the distance between the slot, this, uh, the eight slots and the handicapped spots? Um, on that, on that, that one way piece. Uh, I don't know. I think it's like 12 feet. It says 12 feet on the plan. 12 feet on the plan, yeah. yeah. So you're going, the, the, the front yard was 40 feet, now it's going to be 35. Yeah, it's, that's, we're going into the front yard and doing that. We're allowed to do that because it's not required parking. Yeah. And um, we are taking what is impervious surface, all of this area here, uh, we're going to have a walkway with bluestone terra, uh, that's existing but we're changing this to pervious pavers. So a bunch of what is now pervious, uh, impervious pavement will become pervious pavers. And we're doing the same with all of the parking spaces here. So that you're gonna have macadam going basically down the middle in the entrance and exit drives. So we're actually reducing the impervious surface in this, which we hope is uh, uh, sufficient to, you know, we don't need a, a, a drainage study. Um, and we're not increasing impervious surface by more than a thousand square feet, which would trigger that. And we're proposing a privet hedge here, and we've got to take this tree down to make that work. That's it. You're taking down, yeah, you're just taking down that one. Yeah, this one that's shown here as X, that was already removed. It doesn't exist now. So, so that should be a 37 inch maple? Yeah, that, well it says 40 inch maple on the, this drawing. Uh, there is a 40 inch maple here that is remaining, the 36 inch maple, which is the second one in, is coming down. I can show that on the picture. Right, no, I, can, I got it. Yeah. The first one you said, the sex inch driver is already gone. That one's already gone. Uh, it's not on that plane, it's on the other plane. Okay, that's right. right. Okay. Um, the, the impervious pavers that, that they're going to put in is the same exact thing for um, anyone that's it's over at Atria. And it's also at the room this period across the way. Yeah, it'll it be. It works fantastic. Yeah, it works well. And it provides, you know, these are in, they're not that frequently used. It's no, not something it, it that. also. Because most of the activity is out the back and the uh, person to person and the youth and community center and mm -hmm. all that. People park there because that's where the activities are. Yep. Okay. Questions, comments on this one? Yeah, I have a question. Um, the preschool drop-offs that happen in the morning and, uh, and the midday pickups that can tend to back up traffic turning it onto Rings End Road, that is in the lot, the entrance beyond this. I think correct? Second, the next one, uh, yeah, beyond. Okay. And if that's a problem, and I, I, you know, I'm happy to talk to the director. No, I just want I, to make sure this wouldn't that. encourage change. Or, no, or this backlog. is not a change. Like, I, this isn't used as a secondary yeah. The, the, we have a much better access and a longer, okay. longer. I, I, I don't believe it. This is where they use it. Like, if, like if this was their secondary, you know, drop off when things got backed up, and now this is no longer. Do we anticipate this backup to really come back onto the post road? That's I, really was the question I had. Uh, to be the, frank, the, I think the main access is off the back. That, it makes no sense because I think you get too many people and it would be backing up here if, yeah. we, if they were using that. Yeah. Um, and there's a better assembly area that's safer down there and the playground is at the back. Yeah. And so I, I just... Um, Let me I, ask the question a different way. Is, yeah. there, is there an entrance to the education building on that driveway? A primary entrance? Uh, there's a primary entrance on the education building right here. 
Does on, it get on used? this driveway, and there's one on the back parking lot as well. Does that one get used in the morning a lot, or no? Um, I honestly don't know. Yeah, it's it's been so. a while since my kids were in the preschool. <laughs> really? Okay. That's fine. And I don't have grandkids it's, there yet. My sister, I think, works there. I think uh -huh. she does. I honestly, I don't know. But I think she works in the back building, in the white building, which is over here. That's the white yeah. Um, yeah. stick build. Okay. It's a general meeting item, so we can take a vote if we want to. Um, I entertain a motion to approve the plan as submitted. Jeff makes a motion. Look for a second. Uh, Mike makes a second. All in favor? Yeah, okay. Yeah. There you go. Thank Hold you on. so much. Good luck, sir. Okay. Uh, Okay, the next on the agenda is amendment of subdivision application number 537, William Ziegler Jr., along the point, request to modify street name from Coon Point Road to Ziggy's Way. In our packet, we got a letter. Oh, I'm sorry, yes. Yeah. Amy Barsandi is going to accuse herself of this. Yes. I want to take a copy of this. One, two, three. Four. Get more three. And then I actually did the same thing, too. Not for fancy stars. Yeah, that one's, a, you know, the, the, the map that John handed out is a little more updated than, than the map you're handing out. Um, this is the um, zoning map. Right, this is the zoning map. It does not include that lot line change. Oh, yes, Correct. it does. Look at that. Okay, so it's the same map that John uh, Nuff is here discussing and presenting. Um, Okay, so in our pockets, we got the man. We got a letter from um, a law firm um, addressed and it's signed by Mr. John Huff here. John Huff? Yeah. Um, thank you. You want to explain this to us really quick and ask why, uh, why we're here? You want me to explain it or John? Why don't you explain it, Russell? Sure. Uh, the subdivision law. Right. In, in about 1983, the commission approved the subdivision of the Ziegler property. Uh, and you can see it created two private roads Great Island Road to the north and Coon Point Road to the south. All the public utilities have been run down those private roads, and many of you are familiar with it. The roads have been gated off, they're paved, they're done, they're complete. The bonds were long released a long time ago. They're ready to be developed, but all of those lots, those building lots are all vacant and have been vacant except for the presence of a barn which has been there for a long, long time. So in this case, uh, Attorney Nuff, who's here on behalf of the Zieglers, has requested that the southernmost road, which is now Coon Point Road, be renamed. Again, when they went to PNZ in the 1983, the Zieglers proposed these two road names. Under the subdivision regulations, the, the Planning and Zoning Commission uh, has the ability to name roads in consultation with the town historian and with the provision that it not encumber emergency services so it not sound like another existing road in town. And so, for example, you're not Eddie Lane, Nettie Lane, something that dispatchers would have trouble with. So in this case, they proposed to change the southernmost road to Ziggy's Way in deference to uh, the Ziegler family patriarch, William Ziegler Sr., uh, his, he was known as Ziggy. We ran this by Marion Castell, town historian, who usually weighs in on new subdivision roads. The most, uh, let's say the newest subdivision roads in town are Bishop's Gate, which is off Boston Post Road, Eddie Lane, which is off of Neroten Avenue. Those are the two newest. Uh, we usually see a new road every 10 years or so. So in this case, uh, you have in your packets Marion's email dated September 8th, where she supports the renaming. She says it is memorable and does relate to the family. And she acknowledges that it may even be better than some generic street names that the town has used in the past, noting 
you know, the location of a farm or a field, et cetera. So that is the request before you tonight. If the commission supports the change, what we'll do is work with the town assessor, who is the official agency in town that does street and address renaming and renumbering. And I've run it by Mark McEwen, emergency management director. He says it sounds logical to him. And uh, I think what we would look towards is having this take effect on or about January 1st. That way is so as not to interfere with the upcoming election where the uh, registrar would have to get their records updated, et cetera. So the only thing I wanted to add to Jeremy, thank you, was um, this in town that some other streets like Hecker Drive is named after that police officer. It's a memorial name that passed away or was shot. There's another street, I think it's Costello Street, which is down off of West Avenue um, between Hollow Tree, Hollow Tree Ridge Road and the yeah, those are memorial street names. So it says Hecker and then underneath it's not something. We've never done this before in the 10 years that I've been on the PNZ Commission because I guess there's not the any subdivision. So welcome, Mr. Uh, sir. Um, Thank you. Uh, for the record, John Nuff with our office of 147 Broad Street in Milford. Um, thank you for uh, seeing me this evening. Uh, Jeremy did as thorough of a job and probably more thorough of a job than, than I could have done. He's been uh, very helpful, he's been generous with his time. He didn't mention to me that there have been other instances where the commission has renamed streets that have been um, previously part of a subdivision. So, so we're not precedent setting with this request. Um, clearly it doesn't happen very often but it is an opportunity for uh, my client's family to rename the road in honor of their family patriarch. So I'm happy to answer any questions. It's a very simple request. Um, and as Jeremy indicated, my clients own all the approved lots that abut um, what is now called Coon Point Road. So these six lots are part of the 11 or 12 or 13 lots that are in the market for sale? Is that right? Correct. Okay. Uh, did you know that Scott's Cove was renamed too? I did not know that, no. Scott's Cove wasn't always Scott's Cove. It was something else that's over there. There you go. Um, questions for this gentleman on the road? All good. Comments? Mm, no? The only question I had is that, that one lot with what looks like a pond on it, does that take access off of Great Island? Uh, it, I, I believe that's dedicated open space. Oh, okay. And the, yeah, the pond on this map is the water in the middle. <coughs> That is the open space that's split by the two. On the map that I give you, which is the zoning map, the, the um, three stars are the one that the towns in contract to buy, those three lots. And then the six stars are the left rank, that are in question. The, there's some other lots that are part of this. If you look at the letter, it says, the subject court, uh, yeah, trustee of the state. Um, uh, I thought there was another item in here. Trust, yeah. Okay, yeah, that's it. There was another, all these different bod bodies that owned it. But I think the, I think the relative point is, is that any, any lot that's going to have an address on this street name is under the control of the Zeeglers. Great. Okay. Um, all right, McNally is here. If she, I don't know if she wants to say anything, but she's present tonight. First, Lachman McNally, would you like to speak to this? Yeah, I would just say that the open space does not. There's one entrance to, to this road, to that. Okay. Does that answer your question? Yes. Okay. Um, the open space is not, I guess it touches, but there's no curb cut. Correct. Right. Got it. Okay. I have an intention of motion to approve the request as submitted. Jeff makes a motion. Looking for a second. George makes a second. All in favor? Thank you very much. Good luck with your new street name, sir. Thank you. Have a good You're welcome. Ziegler, huh? Um, someone wanted, um, oh. ping, ping Amy. Oh, I'm up next. Go for Next I'm on the agenda, downtown walkability, discussion of plan for sidewalks, walkability, and parking. 
Um, in your packet, you got a document that says plans for what plans for sidewalk walkability and parking. Um, this is something that Jeremy and I put together um, last summer in August when I get bored because there's no planning zoning meetings, so I figured out something to do. This year, um, we dusted it off again and brought it up, and I wanted to bring it to you guys. Um, this was um, shown to the prior first selectman, the current first selectman, the prior chairman of the Board of Finance, not the current chairman of the Board of Finance. Um, I discussed it a little bit with Ed uh, Gentile um, and also the, um, the Commission on Aging. Um, what sparked it was th this year again was besides being August is a commission on aging is all concerned about walkability. So just to flip to the pages and we'll try to do it quick. I wanted to get you guys up to speed because I think um, most of the people on the commission have never seen this before. Um, but it, uh, other people in town have. So this is a plan for off street parking for Darien. It was started in 1951, which is about 70 some years ago. It was started by um, Frederick Clark and Associates, which is uh, Mike Galante. Those guys have been working with this town for 70 years, um, and they're still doing it. So if you look to the next page, which says plan for parking and um, for off street parking for Darien, it, the, the credit for this goes to David Genovese. He's the one that pulled this out um, of the town plan, whatever it was in 1951. If you look on the top of the Boston Post Road where it says New Street, that's the street that David Genovese is putting in. Okay, so it, I think that it has no name now, but I think um, it may get named Penny Lane at some point in time. But that's the new street that's going to go through um, Corbin Drive. It is going to traverse over Corbin Street because that's where the two new buildings are being built, and there's going to be a curb cut going into the that's uh, effectively a center street parking lot. Tonight, what I'm going to focus on is the bottom half of the yellow, uh, the bottom half of the page where it shows the um, yellow line at highlighter. Um, I did this myself with a yellow highlighter, and again, this is still from 1951, so we're focused kind of sort of on Grove Street. To the left on the page, um, it's kind of whited out now, but it says two squab lane. We, we approved the project for two squab lane, and I think the approvals have since expired. Um, we also approved the project in the middle, which is <coughs> the Darien Theater, uh, which is marked there in pen, and then on the end, is a Darren sports shop on the other end. So the concept is to connect these streets. It came up again in 2016 in the Town Plan of Conservation Development. Um, this was an exhibit from that document. I don't think any um, one on the commission now was on the commission when we did the Town Plan of Conservation Development. So if you look at the page again, it's the yellow line on top of it. One of the plans is Grove Street is extended to connect to Leroy Avenue, allowing continuous travel parallel to the Post Road. And on the other end, it says um, entry to the train station, redesign, improved circulation, secondary connection to Leroy Avenue to ease congestion. Um, that's the piece in the middle, uh, which is where if the Dulcetti property gets developed at Two Squab Lane, there's supposed to be a staircase that connects Two Squab Lane to the train station. Um, in the middle, in the middle it says on the left, a new street like connection links Grove Street to the Post Road. That's the piece that's around here. If you look at the little box, that's kind of sort of next to um, Darren's Sports Shop. Okay? This is something that's out of the town plan. If you look at the next page. Before we go off that page, go right ahead. can I just make an, uh, an observation that mm -hmm. Squab Lane, <coughs> even though it's a named street, really is a parking lot? It's that true. people use that street and go through it very quickly and I, I find it as somebody who goes there every single day to pick somebody off, up off the train it's a it's a very dangerous <coughs> it's a dangerous spot for pedestrians coming off the train and cars parked where they're trying to you know find <coughs> to go wait and pick up it's just if we're doing a redesign here, I would encourage us to look at that as well, incorporate that. The, the, the concept of this whole thing is to make, um, they're called traffic calming, traffic calming items. We talked about it earlier where you can do cobblestone streets, 
Um, you can do brick streets, you can do stamped concrete, um, you can do speed bumps, you can do dips. The, the, the most towns now that can afford it will do cobblestone streets and do brick streets and brick sidewalks. We do have one in town that I bet you nobody has ever really seen. It connects Uncle's Deli to the Sugar Bowl. If you ever go there, mm -hmm. there's a brick path. And that's a traffic coming at them. Um, mm -hmm. What Wilder was just talking about over at the church, when you put in those um, pavers, which are purpose pavers, that makes a sound when you go across it. It makes people go slower. So to, to really your point, and I'm going to get to it in the middle, is we can talk to the powers that be um, about doing some kind of, when you get off the train to connect to the stairs across the parking lot, but you always have to look at the parking spaces. The focus of this isn't there, but your your yeah. point is very well taken. Okay. This this road already exists, though, right? No. The road already exists. What? <coughs> yeah. What? It's just you got a haphazard to the back of the parking lots, right? You have haphazard to the back, of, and if you do walk it, walk it someday. Oh yeah, it's not walkable at all. It's not walkable at yeah. all. Yeah, but it, you can can you can go in on whatever that road is between um, Uncle's and the Sugar Bowl, <coughs> and then get to the end, make a left, and then get out somewhere on Leroy. That right. is possible. <clears throat> but there's no sidewalks that connect. None, there. nothing back there. If yeah. you start at there's big speed bumps back. And we're there. talking about it in a second. If you if you go to the next page, when we start at um, the old Brooks Brothers, which is now um, something shop. a little white. Yeah. Bridal shop. Yeah. This sidewalk ends, and then it goes to two square lane that picks up again. Yep. Then it ends and yeah. picks up again. Um, stairs down to Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah. So yeah. that's a yeah. public road. It's the um, Scrove Street's a public road. There's all the sidewalks and most of them are private. Jeremy's making a face. No, the entrance from the post road along uh, a little something white used to be Brooks Brothers. That's the <coughs> Del City property. Yeah, it's it functions as a road, but it's private property. Yeah, that's but, a one. And then what about Grove the Street in the back parking lot? Grove Street is a public. The, the sports shop, that's still a public road, even though it's uh, kind of no, dies. No. The, the part right. of Grove Street that's public is the area, I'll call it, between in front of Melting Pot. And a little further down in front of Espresso Neat. And that's it. And then the, right the building there. all the way at the end. I'm going to show you where it ends. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And then there's a parking lot that you know. And then the, once you go into the parking lot, that's all private. Gotcha. We're going to get to that in two more pages. Where Grove Street jogs here is where, essentially, where the it public ends. portion ends. of the street ends. That's in as it goes through. the back of my office, the right. 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 Yes. Right. And that. Yeah, I traverse that every single day. Right. So day. <laughs> the, the next page is something again out of the plan of conservation development. It says um, ensure traffic issues improvements are addressed. That's P and Z with the leader being the town. Create shorter streets could be public or private, which is what you just brought up a minute ago. P and Z extend Grove Street to Leroy Irving connection back to the post road. That's how you get from Grove Street through the parking lot, um, and that's basically kind of where Darren's Sports Shop is action steps and um, implement study of recommendations including in the town boot one study p and z is supposed to be a partner doing this so with, that's with, what we're doing with that one the winding the underpass is underneath the train tracks right is that the state land or is that our land could we that, wind that even if we wanted to um it we can't do it um do it it was, you're talking about leroy right yeah yeah because yeah. it's narrow to walk on the sidewalk it's yeah. like super tight and it's super tight with the cars as well down there the, the way those things work is it has to be in your town plan conservation development for two periods in a row for basically 20 years. And so then, then the state will come in and then help Then you us. can go to the state and you get on the state's list. Gotcha. The state's right now focused most of its stuff in Stanford. Um, Stanford had right. two of theirs redone. Yeah, the train um, the Greenwich had one of theirs redone. I think under the last first selecting, I think we applied, I forget that. That issue is in our town plan today yep. from 2016. It should be in 2026, we're around when that happens. Um, I can't recall if it was in 2006. But we would need state approval because it's right under the tracks. It's under the tracks, right? We, yeah. don't, we don't do that. We, we don't can't do that forward. ourselves, right? Yeah. That's all DOT. Um, the other one, ironically, is there's another we put in the town plan in 2016 to connect Old Kings Highway North and Old Kings Highway South. Right now, there's a culvert yeah. that's, I think, six feet in diameter or something like that where the water flows through. That was supposed to be a street. There's a plan to make that a street again. So Got it. But, you know, I don't think it's ever going to happen. There was a plan in 1960, I would yeah. guess, something like that. Well, when the, when the traffic went through. <laughs> the next page is, is some, some of the same stuff. Wine underpass on the pedestrian bridge, <coughs> safer street capacity. That's what you're talking about. 
connect all Kings Highway north and south. That's what I just told um, in the box on the bottom of the page. And this again shows the Corbin Drive on one side and then um, the new street on the other one. <coughs> More stuff out of the plan of conservation development. Um, and I've said this before, and it's not meant to be any derogatory. The PNC has no budget, so we don't have any money to do any of this stuff. So we have to go to the Board of Selectmen or the Board of Finance and ask them if they, if they get on board, if it's going to be a public private partnership. There is a provision in the planning and zoning code. Um, I know David Genovese has, paid, is, has participated when they do sidewalks. There's some kind of public private split, like 60, 40, 40, 60, something like that, when a, a private property owner does something to benefit the town relative to sidewalks and walkability. Um, I've not really looked into that um, too much. The next page is just some sidewalks where they're wider. Um, that's out of town plan. They want to want to get you guys. It's just it sounds like everybody's seen it. Um, add pictures for um, up this deli to Sugar Bowl. Greenwich has got this all over downtown Greenwich, um, and then the Darren Sports Shop. He's got an application right now um, at the ARB, and they're supposed to put a landscaping plan. I think they're going back to ARB on the 18th also. Or so could be. Um, the next page is um, Two Squab Lane. This was a plan that we approved in, I guess, 2019. This is when they were supposed to <coughs> dig down on the house. When we approved that plan, um, we did not ask them to do sidewalks to wrap their building. If you look at the bottom where it says Brooks Brothers, that's the path we're talking about. Brooks Brothers, the sidewalk starts and it stops, then it starts again, it doesn't do anything. The, the concept is to, and um, the docetities are on board, is to connect the end of the Brooks Brothers sidewalk to the melting pot sidewalk going through Squab Lane. That's all on Dulcetti property. Um, they would love to do it once their building is under construction, but it's been talked about being under construction for at least 15 years. Is that about right? That's where that little White House is. That's the little White House. White House is two squab lane. The falling down stairs. Um, yeah, and that's where the stairs get connected over the top. Um, on the bottom of that page, it talks about and it, it's kind of sort of there where Upper Crust Bagel is, is where it starts. And this, on the bottom of the page, it says that there's a DCA thrift shop right away to Center Street. There's a parking lot. I didn't know this, but when I showed this to Mr. Dolcetti, he told me that there's a right of way um, that's between, which is First County Bank. I always mess it up. I think it's First County Bank and the DCA. There's a 14 foot right of way, which comes up on the that's next where the page. Drive through tellers are, right? What's that? Drive through tellers are down that little it's, road. Yeah, right? on the other side of that white fence. Yeah. There's a right of way that the town has access to. It's on owned property um, where you could have the potential to put in some kind of improvements to get people off of the post road to the parking lot in the back. If you look on either side of um, the, mo the movie theater building now, there's, there's roadways that go there and there's these um, arches that <laughs> are uh, iron. They're like iron arches that say parking back there or um, what's the restaurant that's under one of them? Um, yeah. Sienna. Sienna's got one on, on one side and they have no, on the other side that's, that goes up all there with the side yeah, entrance. Sidewalks. Maybe you can yeah. put something like that in there. New Canaan has them. Westport has them. Westport goes through the town. It's to get people to be able to get to that parking lot in the back. Um, the next page shows you, um, this is out of the Darien Place, which is the old movie theater. On the left, it says um, Dulcetti. Mr. Dulcetti owns that building on the corner that says um, Dolman, Property. Dolman Properties. That's um, Dulcetti and I forget the other guy's name. It's two brothers. They own that building there. Ironically, if you go to that building and it says Geiger on the outside, um, Liz Geiger's husband has his office in there. If you look at the red that's on the piece of paper, when Dulcetti, when, I'm sorry, um, the Carlos did that project, we asked them to put in a brick sidewalk to connect it. So it, it starts at the Dulcetti property and that brick sidewalk goes across um, the entrance to the parking lot, which takes you all back in there. And that is a traffic calming issue. It's got grand key, granite curbs on either side of it and, bri and bricks in the middle. Inside their property, they also <coughs> did put in uh, they did put in a bunch of speed bumps inside there. If you look at the yellow highlighted line that does not have the red, that is all the sidewalk that uh, Vaccaro put in. If you go back there, 
what what happened was and what we wanted to happen was with Corbin Driver with New Street, which might, like I said earlier, might be Penny Lane, it's creating two parallel retail streets on either side of the post road. The biggest complaint that we get in town is traffic in the center of town. Mm -hmm. And now you're creating retail on the backside. So on the back of the uh, movie theater building, now you have three retail stores. On the other side of the post road, you can have all David Genovese and stuff, which is all retail stores off the post road. Then there's an application out there for the next building over, well, the next building over is um the liquor store which is which dents back in the next one over is where is the front side is webster bank and the back side used to be wish list a long time ago and then it went into i think inner light inner light and now it's got something else there something it's what would you call it uh let's call it a spa a spa yeah so if if someday the back of that building turns into retail and enhances the value of that building because interior rent side rents are a little bit different than than rear rents with windows over the parking lot so the the idea is to connect the end of um the the where vaccaro stopped his red brick all the way directly to the front door of the post road with some kind of sidewalk or stamped asphalt or some kind of paving back there then if you look at where the front door which is really the back door of darren sports shop is they have a sidewalk that goes along the facade of the building then it ends because there's a bunch of bushes there so you still can't get to the post road right now the darren sports shop has an application um, in with the arab they're coming back to the arab to introduce their landscaping plan the hope is and the ask is if they will take out those i think they're called junipers and put in parking there so you can walk around it after you leave that entrance then mr genovese got approvals from the state to put in a crosswalk going across the street from from the post road so there's going to be a crosswalk there on the post road. It's somewhere in front of um, Webster Bank or, or in front of um, the Darren Sports Shop. So if that happens, you're going to have another traffic coming across on the post road. So if everything works perfect, you have a complete loop around town that starts at down by, um, you know, um, the, the old um, Brooks Brothers goes down, po goes down to two squad wing, goes all the way down. Um, Grove Street crosses to the sports shop, goes back to the other side and connects up with the new building. So that's the plan. If you look on the next pages, that is a sidewalk that, or a crosswalk that appeal on the post road um, that connects the one side, which is that's Darien Crossing, one side of Darien Crossing to the other side, where at that building now that's on the bottom of it, that's from, um, it was installed in the summer of 22, that's where the new Orvis, and not Orvis, or the new um, Angler. Complete Angler is yeah. going to go into. The other one is, is the picture of stamped asphalt. That's the easiest, cheapest way to do it. You can put in stamped asphalt in these um, projects. But if you go the expensive route, it's going to be mm -hmm. something like the car will put in when you go back there. Um, and that's pretty much it. The other one, the other uh, item is just some excess land the town has where the town put in um, sidewalks there. So that, that my, my personal next step is to go to the first selectman and go to the board of selectmen and see if they could review something like this. It starts to get to budget season. I'm not really a budget season kind of guy, um, but I know it's gotta happen there someplace. Um, and you also have to have public private partnerships. I spoke to Mr. Dosetti, he's on board. I spoke to Mr. Conzi with Jeremy. Um, we also walked the property with with Mr. Conzi and with Mr. Dolcetti. They said, yeah, it's a great idea. Um, their only question is, how does it all get paid for? I spoke to and met with um, Mr. Vaccaro, who owns a big piece in the middle. He's on board with it. I spoke to Wyvern Gleason, who represents Webster Bank and that building. He's on board with it. Um, who else did I speak to? I speak to Jeremy's helped out, Ed Gentile a little bit, and Mrs. McNally, she, she's introduced it to her. Um, and we'll see if it goes further. Is there, is there anything we need to do or we can do to um, make it all uniform so that we don't have one stamped asphalt down by the Darien Sports Shop and then another raised brick one 400 yards away and then another one? You know, so it doesn't look like a hodgepodge of people hacking this together. It looks like one actual thing. I don't know if that's ARB, if that's us, if it's out of anybody's control, but like that we should kind of nudge them to 
pick. It doesn't matter what it is, like as long as it just looks right. the same. Public Works will have the what they call the model block standards, right? Which is certain types of brick, granite curbing, certain types of style of street lights, etc. So that would be what would go out to everyone. This is what we're going to do. Okay. Right. One style, exactly. One what you style, said. yeah. Okay. Which is kind of sort of what Vaccaro put in when you go down the end of Grove Street, right? Because the the the, the concept is to make Darien more walkable, friendly commercial um, yeah. uniform and it's you know it makes it for a better town and that's our job yeah you know that's our job okay questions comments anything Mr. McCallie would you like to speak to this at all since you're ex officio or we'll talk some other time okay. all righty that's it next item on the agenda uh, possible del poss deliberations and possible decision on the following coastal site plan review 27 F is in Frank flood intervention application 20 F is in Frank land filling and regrading application uh, 325 a amendment to the special permit application number 22 Q that's Q <coughs> right? that site plan the tokeny club Inc for tokeny Beach Drive proposal to replace the existing swimming pool and its equipment Reduce it, reduce the size of and renovate the bathhouse, relocate the snack bar from ground level of the clubhouse to an outdoor area near the pool, renovate the existing snack bar area, make improvements to terracing, walkways, and landscaping and form related site development activities within regulated areas. No intensification of, proposed, of use is proposed. The public hearing closed on September 6, 2022. Inside our packets, we have a draft resolution that was drafted by Jeremy and Fred and team. Um, I guess everybody's room. We had two or three nights of public hearings on this. Um, the, the pool was one way, then it got spun around the other way. Um, the spinning of the pool the other way was, um, was an idea that kind of sort of came up from us. They changed the pool a little bit. It lowers their cost for it. Um, the neighbors are involved on it. Um, they seem on board. Architect Review Board reviewed the application. They're on board. So now it's just up to us to bless the final um, <coughs> resolution. First of any questions, comments, scrivener's errors, typos that they caught in this thing? Um, I have one question. Go uh, right ahead. Under landfilling and regrading G. Um, a pre-construction survey shall be performed on the existing structure to the northeast of the construction area. Daily seismic monitoring reported for the duration of demolition phase throughout pile driving, excavation, and controlled fill operations. I recall um, a discussion about um, visiting the neighbors and visiting their existing um, conditions on their foundations if they allow so for so for that and then monitoring any adverse effects is this what this is talking to or is this is this speaking to something different yes that's what it's speaking to the pre-construction survey would be the uh, the club would hire um, someone to do this pre-construction survey the blaster or the 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 uh, <coughs> not the blaster but the the uh, the firm that's um, I guess vibrating the, yeah. uh, the the panels into the ground. Um, the wood piles, yeah. Um, the wood piles into the ground um, would assess the foundation and the, the structural integrity of the neighbor's house, and then uh, during the process monitor that on a daily basis. So yes, that's that's inclusive of that, that condition. And the neighbors more than one but just the way this is written it says to be performed on the existing structure to the northeast of the construction area I didn't know what we are speaking about with that sentence um, we could perhaps it add a clause what? about the, 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 the selected houses yeah well, I, I would say Missing Amy's got a good point with with that neighbor's permission because we can't make them go yeah, on we, someone yep. else's property. Yep. So if permission yep. is granted by the neighbor, yeah. Up, 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 up. Right. Yep. And now that we're speaking about this, I, I, I question in my own mind if there's other, there's other structures, houses. other houses yes. in direct proximity that should be included 
in included as part sure of this as well. What the what the the details were on that, whether I, I whether it was I, existing buildings and neighbors that had been identified and this was off, made an offer to, and if it is, then let's itemize them here. Um, well, we did we did this on, on um, or if it's we did it on 26 you know, Short Lane. I don't want them to be beholden to do anything. Hey, I'm northeast of this site. You right. know, I don't want to. You know, like if we're saying it's these three neighbors, then let's let's list them. We did, on 26 Short Lane, we didn't list the neighbors, but mm -hmm. the next door there, there's an antique house. So the, so the concept and theory is you go into the basement of that house, you look for cracks in the basement, mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. if there's a crack there, you leave, you come back later, you, pile, you do pile driving. If the crack got bigger, yep. it's token yep. Eclipse fault. Yep. The fact didn't yep. change there. But we want to we itemize what the club okay. is responsible for. Right. We don't want to make it too open ended. No, you're right. Because it's the north, it's the existing transfer to the northeast, which which is Montero's house. It's Montero. Montero. Yeah. That was is there any other house that they're going to have to monitor? I mean, I you're not going to go as far as Dick Dodonna's house at 11. No, sort, I, th I think sort of road. That Mr. Montero is clearly the closest structure, and I think uh, to where the pool and all that activity yeah. is going. Yeah. Uh, so that would make the most sense, and that's what was discussed at the hearing. Right. Yeah. So I think if the so my recommendation would be to itemize the address. And, and start with if, per if if permission granted, you know, you know, offer to do a pre-construction survey monitoring of one piece. Instead of saying the existing structure to the northeast, you just say the address. The month. Yeah. But do you want to open it up to any other people? Well, this is shell. Can you just say like a, a certain like radius or area? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't want to. Yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to. Property right. line. But everyone have no because when, when we d when we did short lane there was a person with an antique house that was was a big deal but that house was on was on token the front door was on token road on um openings highway which is three houses over so okay. what's that jeremy or fred do you know what the next closest house to, to uh, montero is and how far it is well there's there's the, the, the roadway and then the water in front Right. Dick, you know, and Dick is that. So I don't. So it's really uh, the uh, next closest neighbor is kind of tucked around the side. Well, the question is, does the commission wish to require it for all of these houses? No. Jeff no. is saying no. no. So you don't have to put anything in the resolution if you're not requiring it. Well, that's just me. I'm not. I'm not speaking right. for. Yeah. I I would just like to I would just like to have the address listed. So the this the way it reads is I I don't want to open up the club to. You know, you didn't adhere to this. Right. Clause. It's if permission is granted, because it's too and I think it's eight Tokenic Beach, but I'll double check on that. Yeah. So let's just say, you know, just uh, that my recommendation is to just. Let's if you look on the survey, the plan, it's going to say now. Eight Butler's Island, Island Road. Road. Yeah. That's my. Mm -hmm. That's that's eight my Butler's recommendation. Island Road. Okay. Okay. Good point. I think during the public hearing, the applicant indicated that they would. They would do the pre-construction survey for this, for the Montero home, yeah. and that and that was it. And, so and it's really no other neighbors have come forth to express concerns. Right. Let's keep it identified, keep right. it simple and detailed. Okay. That was my one. I think that was all I had. Yeah, I think that's all I had. Jeff, go ahead. I'm good now. I only had one small question on mm -hmm. item 17. They enumerated approximately 235 wood piles. Oh, I had that too. Uh, what happens? It, what is approximately? If it's 236, is that okay? If it's 250, yeah, if it's yeah. 280, do we want to scratch the number and put no more than some bigger number like 300? What number are you on? Uh, Paragraph 17, 17 four. page four. I wasn't sure, you know, because sometimes we'll say plus or minus something i don't know if we want to make it abnormally high this way they won't go over it no matter what like no more than 500 i don't know but do we want to put something so specific like 235 and if we do then what does approximately mean does it mean one two five well, we, ten the number I mean, we got was from the engineer from the engineer that was the one right? that stood up there yeah so that's what you put approximately i think if you want to do approximately two thirds or plus or minus well do you, like i just think we should say something other than just approximately because 
if what happens if they do it, they find out it's actually two forty five. Is that approximately? You know, approximately is what is that? Is it one, two, ten? I think you leave it within staff's discretion. Yeah. So, I mean, they I can ter so. certainly handle it. I just noted that that was the only kind of weird thing that kind of stuck out. Yeah, I mean, I think if they put five hundred in, I think that's not approximately. Yeah, no, because it, it's well, it, the, 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 I think the question that I asked was how wide are these piles and then how wide is the space? Right. So if the piles are eight feet and they're doing, you know, 350 linear feet, it's 350 divided by eight. That's where the number falls out of. You know, that's where it came from. This is a finding based on testimony received by the commission during the public hearing. If you wanted to add uh, right it's a, a finding so a, then the back side is a condition of approval which is the letters right so all the numbers are findings of the commission where the letters are the conditions of approval we're okay. going to be talking about yeah. okay. putting in yeah. a new condition of approval with respect to yeah. the, number the number of piles that would be driven I see. Right. one option would be to say at the start of that it was represented by the applicant's engineer that approximately you could say you could say that so it's clear yeah. with the that's fine yeah yeah because yeah. 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 it's a finding it's not a resolution got it yeah good okay. catch that's it yep mike you're good george fine you're good I'm doing what I said. okay with that said i would take a motion to approve as edited uh adam makes a motion jeff makes a second all those in favor <laughs> One, two, as amended. Six, as amended. Got it. As yep. amended. Six zero. Thank you. Six zero. Next item up. I did. I did. Uh, next item on the agenda: flood stop prevention application number. No, it's tied, actually one one. Tied it up. Yeah, they just tied, tied it, it up. up. Sorry, I, I wasn't Mine. watching, but you know, yeah. I heard. I don't <laughs> see the TV, Mom. I got the yeah. update on the okay. right. watch yeah. here. Thank you all. Have a good day. Thank you. Tide is turning already. Next item, flood time information application number 434, landfilling and regaining application number 533, Lucas and, oh, Jesus. Brianna. Brianna Raymond at 178 New Water Lane, proposed to raise existing residents and construct a new three-bedroom single-family dwelling in the same location, construction of a new driveway, and terrace before related site development activities within the regulated area, including minor regrading of the property and installation of storm mortar management. Hearing closed on September 27th, 2022. Um, this is a new house that's being built down in Roten Bay. Um, in our packet, we have a um, draft resolution in our hands. Uh, we met on this, I think, just one night, right? Mm -hmm. This was this one simple night? Yeah. On October 11th. Questions, comments, typos, Scribner's errors in this one at all? Amy's good, George is good, Mike's good, Adam's good, and Jeff Ball has got a thumbs up. Okay, with that said, I would like to make a motion to approve as submitted. Amy makes the motion, uh, George makes the second. Good job, George. I saw the All in favor? Now. Six to zero. zero. Thank yeah. you. He's in the game. Okay. Um, next item, deliberations only on the following time permitting. Coastal site plan review number uh, 29A is an apple. Flood sound prevention application number 23A is an apple. Daniel and um, Hilda McLean at 25 Contentment Island Road. Proposed to construct new terrace and patio areas at the rear of the residence and construct a new balcony and access way to the existing basement and raise the portion of the roof and perform related safety development activities within regulated areas. The public hearing closed on September 27, 2022. This is a house that's at the end of a shared driveway between 27 and 25 in Contentment Island, which is on the other side of. Um, uh, Token Beach, Beach Club. Um, they came to us at least three nights. Um, the house is gutted. There's all kinds of construction going on there, not going on there. They're going to be working on it for a long time. Um, at the end of the day, we got both the Plan A and Plan B, or Plan A and Phase 1A and Phase 2A done at the same time. 
I think they're all in accordance where we wanted. Um, any comments on this one? No? No, no. Okay, we'll draft something for next week or the week after. Yeah, and you'll do something about that some construction has already been going on. Yep. There. Okay, thank you. Okay, staff's going to write up a positive one on that one. Uh, next item up, Coastal Site Plan Review Number 244A is an Apple Fred Center Prevention Application Number 276A, Landfilling and Regrading Application Number 536, Jeffrey Collins and uh, Shira, I just terrible names, I'm sorry, uh, Matsumi at 112 Five Mile River Road, proposed to construct an in-ground pool including associated patio areas on the eastern portion of the site and perform related site development activities within regulated areas, including regrading of the property, installation of a storm water management. Um, I don't we really remember something. It's a pool it. right up against the front porch, the porch yeah, would overlook the Five Mile River. So the, it will be the pool deck is basically going to be the front porch. Yeah. It just fits in against the setbacks, yep. and it's a corner lot, corner of Davis and Five Mile River. Yeah. Uh, there was no no public at the hearing, I believe. It was uh, fairly uneventful hearing. Yeah. This is the pool that it, yeah. it looks like it's in the front lawn, but it's really not the front lawn, it's the side lawn. An infinity yeah. pool. Mm. Yeah, and th there was a connection between the front porch and the house that was really close that we made them redefine. The grade is pretty mineral, mm -hmm. too, right? They were only moving it like three feet, four feet. Yeah, it wasn't anything major. Questions, comments, concerns with that one? Nope. Okay. Staff can wrap the positive approval for that one. Next item, landfilling and regrading application number 537, Adrian and Carrie Ann Merkt at 106 Colony Road Extension, proposal to construct a rear yard to mitigate drain, drainage impacts and to construct retaining walls and series of landscape stone slabs and pathways from the lower portion of the existing slope to provide access to the upper east, upper slash east side of the property and from related site development activities. This is the house at the end of Colony Road. Um, they want to level their backyard and bring it together. I always make the comment about they probably have a kid that plays soccer uh, and want to have a level backyard. Um, I don't think we got any. We take it. One neighbor did question it, right? Fred? There was some neighbor concern about this. You'll also recall that during the public hearing, um, we noted that the applicant had showed stormwater infrastructure, including infiltrator units and uh, yard drains on the property. Um, the applicant kind of wavered back and forth on that as to whether or not it was required. Um, anything less than a thousand square feet of additional pervious surface uh, proposed by the applicant doesn't typically require any sort of formal drainage uh, be provided and reviewed by the DPW, um, but they did show it on the plans. Uh, following the close of the public hearing, the applicant actually submitted a revised plan eliminating the drainage from uh, what they had proposed. Which is so, what we asked for. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we asked for that because yeah. we, wanted, we wanted a clean document that didn't have that proposed stuff on it because it, it's not required, we're not requiring it, and the engineer doesn't need it, so that's why they took it off. <coughs> Questions, comments on this one? Can they just build that drainage if they decide to? Yes, they certainly have. going forward if, uh, if they say, you know what, we're going to put a little drainage on our property, they would have the ability to do that. You're yeah, right. Is that, is that <coughs> separately permitted or is that just... just, you just uh, if they're tying into a town system, it would be separately permitted. Some people come to us and say, this is what we're doing, and what we suggest to them is, look, file a plan, we'll put it somewhere in your records here, so a future owner can figure out what when happened? they start putting in a tree and they hit a drainage system, yeah. at least don't worry about it. Don't okay. regrade. Yeah. <laughs> so you're going to write up a positive report on that yep. one? Okay. And approval, I'm sorry, I don't mean to say it that way. Uh, next item, <coughs> land filling and recruiting application number 534-185 Riverside Street, LLC at 259 Middle 6 Road. Proposes to construct a new six-bedroom single-family dwelling on a now vacant lot, construction of a new driveway, terrace and porch areas, and a pool in form of related site development activities, including the regrading of the property, installation of a storm water management. Um, which one was this again? Todd Ritchie, the engineer. Explain that it's a new house going on a vacant lot. The lo water now flows to the, across call it the, the back DCA. right, it's across the from the DCA. No, the yeah, neighbor yeah, the who lives in that yep, house yep. said, hey, 
I know which way is the water going to flow? Can you address water flow? And Todd Ritchie ran through the drainage system at the yep. area. It's going to be a, it's going to be a big, big seven thousand square big foot house, house um, next to Lady's Little House. Um, so to be it has to be built right. That's all. Mm -hmm. okay. Designed to work. Good. Yeah, we okay, okay. we had to approve for that one. Uh, next one, Chairman's report. I don't really have a report tonight. I think I spoke enough already. Uh, director's report. Sure, there's two very quick items. The first is uh, we've been going out walking the federal realty property every week, every Tuesday for three or four weeks now. They are at a point where uh, we're going to be issuing the temporary certificate of occupancy tomorrow, which will allow people to move into uh, the northernmost building uh, Friday and Saturday when I was out there. I think it was the Roten Heights fire truck was out there doing some uh, checking and double checking. We've been out there with fire marshal, deputy fire marshal, building official, assistant building official, myself. Uh, so it's been quite a team effort, a lot to look at, a lot of issues. Uh, but they're at a point where, and if you've been by there every day, you notice the difference. That's yeah. how much is going on. They have, I want to say, 100 people out there every day. Maybe that's a little high, but. More likely, that's pretty close to the right number. There's a lot of people working indoors. And Saturdays. And Saturdays. So that's good. And then they'll move their focus to Building 3, which is facing Heights Road, which is coming along pretty nicely. Yep. Uh, the other thing I'll note is uh, Steve and Amy were kind enough to meet with PZ and H Committee of the RTM on Thursday. The full RTM is going to take up the issue of accessory apartment opt-out at their meeting Monday, October 17th. So I'll be attending that, and uh, we'll once we see how that goes, we'll determine next steps for this commission. If the RTM votes to opt out, we send notice up to the state, and we have a chance to breathe. If the RTM says we're not opting out, we'll circle back to you the week after and talk about possible next steps. The the at that meeting with PZ and H, they voted unanimous, unanimously. I don't know how many people were there. Yeah. It was not. It was a. It was a quorum. Wasn't the full committee um, to up down to follow our recommendation. Um, they were very tentative. Asked some good questions. The big concern that PZ and H had was, and it's if you guys remember a little bit um, when we did this for parking, we already had the parking in place. We don't have the parking the the, the accessory dwelling unit in place yet um, because it's a much more complicated issue. Yeah. Um, but. I told them, and I've been cleaning my garage, because we, we've been working on this thing for over a year. You know, probably even longer than that, this ADU thing. Um, because it even dated back to Hardy Brown. There's a lot of work so, that's been done on and off through the years in Darien on this issue. Yeah. Um, anything else? Nothing else. Any other business requires two third votes of the commission? Can I ask a question? Of course you can. What's going on with Palmer's? <laughs> I had to bring I, it up, didn't I, you? I get asked that question <laughs> almost daily. I, I bring it up usually every time, so I'm glad somebody and, took the reins and, to this and meeting. I, and I actually met with a member of the uh, Blight Board today who was wondering what we're doing to try and move that project along. We oh. wrote a letter on, sep on yeah, May 5th, 25th, telling them to move the ball forward. Um, when was that? Yeah, we wrote a letter on I thought we had it on May twenty fifth to say move the ball forward and keep doing what you're supposed to do. Um, we probably probably about time to to follow up on that. Uh, is it here? Yeah, I'm sorry, May eighteenth. I have it right here. How do you ask? On May eighteenth, we wrote a letter to um, to Jim Palmer asking him to move the project forward. Um, I'm also requesting that you let us know your next steps. The preferred option would be apply for a new demolition permit from the building department. The old demolition is long expired. The project is not proceeding over the next few months. Please let me know. Love, Jer signed Jeremy Kinsberg. <laughs> Love. Um, we want to follow up on this. Follow up on this. Okay. Log rolling. Yep. We talk, but there's not much we can do about it. Yep. Yeah. All right. So Next time I'm asked the question, I got But is, is, do we even know if uh, Papa John's back in as a funder? Because he was out, and, is probably and then he was back in. To discuss that. And then, I'm, sure. I'm just yeah. suggesting that's kind of. Yeah, I, I, mean, I don't know. But it's I don't really know. not, it, it's not in our purview. I don't know if there's 
rumors and talks and whatnot, there's nothing official on the, on the, on the board. Yeah. No, that's, that's not our job anyways. I was just yeah. curious what. Yeah, I have nothing new to report. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, next upcoming meeting is October 18th, a week from today. And we have another one, October 25th, which is my son's birthday, so I might not be here today. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> All right, well. Anything coming up? It's been a while since we had I'm a birthday. It's like a long-running thing yeah. for like three months. And I'll probably be either coming late or leaving early on the 25th. Okay. But around. And then in November, are we November like four straight? November, we're the 1st, yep. the 15th, and then the 29th. So we're avoiding election day and Thanksgiving. Thanks, Can you just give us a hint of what's on the agenda for the 18th? The 18th is three or four public hearings. Uh, a couple of them are continuations. Let's see if I can get the exact ones. Eight Pratt Island, Fred is one of them. Yeah, six and eight Pratt Island. Continuation um, of 29 Brush Island. which, And continuation of 24 Great Hill. Remember we had issues about drainage over there. Mm -hmm. And on the 25th is 122 Delafield Island Road, 165 Long Neck Point Road, they want to add a garage on a waterfront property, 573 Middlesex Road, it's someone's pool, they're regrading for the pool, and a hearing on the continuation of 35 Old Parish. They came to the commission to put a pool on the property, only realized that's where their drainage system is, so they had to redesign the project. That's why drainage system That's why you filed. That's why you filed. To our earlier comments. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, with that said, I want to a motion to adjourn. Jeff makes a motion, looking for a second. Mike makes a second back on the board. All in favor? Right. Six nothing. Right. Out of five, not too good. Thanks, Thank everybody. You. Thank you, sir. Awesome.